Hello, you're watching News 9 Live. A special court in Gujarat has acquitted all the accused in the Naroda Gaon massacre case in which 11 Muslims were killed in the post Godhra violence on the 28th of February 2002. The verdict comes 21 years after the incident and 14 years after the court was established and trial commenced against 86 people, of which 18 have already died in the intervening period. Former BJP MLA Dr. Maya Kudnani and ex Bajrang Dal leader Babu Bajrangi were among the accused. This case can be 86 Arupite or Sapko Nidos Track at Chordia, Varikardia. 86 के सामने में 82 आरोपी के और समय रिप्रेजेंट करता था जिसके अंदर जयदीप भी आ गए मायाबेन बाबू भी बाबू भी पड़ा हो गए सबको बरी कर दिया है और कोर्ट ने बताया है कि उन लोगों के खिलाफ जो आरोप लगे थे वो सब गलत हैं वो पुरवार करने में सरकार पक्ष निष्फल गए हैं इसलिए सबको बरी किया जाता है यही बताता हूं कि केस चलाने में माहौल में ऐसा है कि इस केस चलाने में जो न्याय की प्रक्रिया है उसके अंदर जो समय लगता है उस समय के अंदर यह प्रक्रिया में इतना लंबा विलंब हुआ है लेकिन न्याय देर से मिला लेकिन दुरुस्त से मिला है हम पीड़ितों की तरफ से जजमेंट की कॉपी आने के बाद इसको डेफिनेटली हाई कोर्ट में चैलेंज करेंगे और हम यह मानते हैं कि 11 लोगों की जो हत्या हुई थी जिन लोगों को जिंदा जला दिया गया था रास्तों पर और उनके घरों के अंदर और आज हम एक बार फिर से यह सवाल पूछ रहे हैं कि इन 11 लोगों को किसने जिंदा जलाया था कौन इसके लिए जिम्मेदार था और क्यों आज भी ये पीड़ित परिवार इंसाफ के लिए तरस रहे हैं और इनको आज भी इंसाफ नहीं मिला Two decades and more and the verdict has pronounced, been pronounced now. One may ask why such a delay? My colleague Ashok Bagriya, who is our legal editor, is joining me on the broadcast. Ashok, you know, one kept hearing of this 186 or more, you know, who witnesses who were questioned. Several, of course, judges recused themselves. Then one police officer was found to be scoffing and smiling, remember, and the court uh, berated him. Now it's taken so long, something or the other would go wrong. Of course, we'll speak about the verdict later. But first, why such a long delay? Well, primarily, uh, if you look at the records of the court, uh, the case was investigated. The investigation in the case started sometime in 2010. Hmm. It was basically after the Supreme Court constituted a special investigation committee. That was the team which was handed over the investigation in the case because there were a slew of petitions which were filed in the Supreme Court mm. saying that we don't have faith in the Gujarat police to investigate this case fairly. An SIT was found by the Supreme Court. That SIT investigated the case, filed a charge sheet and the matter went for trial. Now what happened was during the course of the trial, uh, you rightly pointed out that there were approximately 187 prosecution witnesses and 57 defense witnesses which had to be examined. So first one judge started hearing the matter, started examining the witnesses, right. he got transferred. The second judge comes in, he has to start again from the beginning. Oh, yeah. He starts examining again a couple of years later, he's transferred. This happened in four instances. In the fifth instance, the judge retired. And in the sixth instance, this particular judge completed the trial proceedings. The trial proceedings got over on the 5th of April. And today, finally, 13 years after mm. the trial proceedings started, a judgment is what we have today. And it's really, uh, in a way, it's interesting to see right. that 13 years later, the judge comes to a conclusion that nobody possibly killed these 11 people. Right. who were killed during the 2002 Gujarat riots. That's right. And you know, when one, I mean, you correct me if I'm wrong, but one once read lots of reports about how um, there was very, very thin police presence. Another argument that the police was there, whatever, but they looked away and did not participate in saving the lives which were being burned, 11 Muslims. Then how the witnesses kept changing their stand again and again and again and again. I mean, it seems to be it seems to be one of those cases which will go down in history because of the length that it's taken and also the twist and turn. Incredible, would you agree, Ashok? Yes, I do agree. Now, what has really happened in the last 13 years is that a lot of things have happened. And uh, one very interesting fact that I would like to bring it to your notice 
was that uh, the current Home Minister, Amit Shah, who was then right. the BJP president, had deposed as a defense witness for Maya Kodnani. Maya Kodnani, uh, when she was arrested in this case, used to be the Minister of Women and Child Development in the Narendra Modi government in Gujarat at that point in time. And in 2017, Amit Shah, when he was the BJP president, was produced as a defense witness. He testified in the court saying that Maya Ben Kodnani was not at the place in Naroda Gam when the riots happened. He said she was with him at the Gujarat Assembly at 8.30 in the morning. Then subsequently, an hour later, he says that by 9.30 or somewhere between 9.30 and 9.45, right. Maya Kodnani was with him at the Sola Civil Hospital where the dead bodies of the people who had died in the Sabarmati train carnage were being brought. And by 11 o'clock, she continued to be there right. with Amit Shah. Maya Ben Kodnani is an interesting character in this whole thing because she apparently is the only woman accused not only in this Naroda Gam case, but even in the Naroda Patia case where there were 96 casualties, yes. 96 people had died. And in that case, Maya Ben Kudnani was found, was convicted, was found to be guilty, sentenced 28 years in jail by the trial court. However, the Gujarat High Court reversed the judgment. In 2018, right? Yeah, in, in yeah. 2018, the High Court reversed yes, it. Yes. She is out. There is an appeal which is pending in the Supreme Court, but we don't know how long it's going to take. But a lot of other people were also out on bail, uh, Ashok. It's not just. Yeah, her, right? as far as this particular yeah. case of uh, right. Naroda Gam is concerned, yes. there were two other important characters. Hmm. Uh, one is a uh, one is a person called Babu, Babu Bajrangi, Bajrangi yes. who was the Bajrang the leader of Ahmedabad, and second was the General Secretary of the Vishwa Hindu Parishad, Mr. Jaydeep Patel. Patel yeah. Both of them are out. They are accused in other cases also, but they are out on bail. Today they were present in the court when the judgment was being pronounced because there was an order by the court that we are going to pronounce the order and we expect all the accused to remain present in the court. Mm. And we saw that once the verdict was pronounced, uh, the visuals which represented the, the kind of happiness which broke out on the faces of all these accused. Maya Bain Kodnani was just ecstatic. She was also crying when she stepped out of the courtroom. Uh, probably uh, she's actually at this point in time, uh, she's out on medical bail. She suffers from cancer. Uh, she's constantly undergoing treatment mm. for depression. So on a physical and mental level, she's not keeping well. Right. But you know, uh, somewhere one feels, because uh, like I said, that this was a major carnage, the Godra and later the cases went on. Do you think it's a kind of, not a complete closure to the Godra carnage, which happened on 27th February 2002, but a kind of closure to a lot of narratives which were built around it? Because you know, the jury is still out on that. Well, uh, the, 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 there'll never be a closure mm. to these Gujarat riot cases until and unless they are finally decided by the Supreme Court. Now, what we, have, what we have been witnessing in the last 20, 22 years is the fact that there have been, in some cases, there have been convictions, there have been acquittals. Matters go to the High Court and finally go to the Supreme Court. So, until and unless the Supreme Court finally decides the case either way, there will be no closure. And definitely, one more thing, there can never be closure for the victims in whatever way the courts rule. Absolutely. Uh, very well put. I mean, another thing is that I know that unless you get the order, you're not going to really speak about it. And also, I don't know, you are the legal editor, but usually one is very careful when commenting on anything that the Honorable Court say. But while you were reading this case, Naruda Gam, one just thought that it could also be, because see, the witnesses were turncoats, uh, the police said something and later kind of, you know, reneged on it. It seemed like, I don't know, but I will use that term. Was it botched up? See, an acquittal case, hmm. a case in which an acquittal happens, it happens only for two reasons. Either the investigation is so poor that no evidences were collected for the prosecution to prove the hmm. case conclusively in the hmm. court. That is one scenario. The second scenario is that the judgment is so bad. So here too, 
I believe it's either of the two cases. Either the investigation was so bad that the prosecution could not produce evidence against these 86 accused who stood trial or the second scenario as I said that the judgment is bad. But as far as commenting on the judgment is concerned until and unless I have the fine print in my right. hand, it will be difficult to comment conclusively. On that note Ashok, thank you so much for joining us on the broadcast. And news and analysis will continue on News 9 Live. Keep watching.